This week, we will be using data and searching by attributes to make our maps, which is a little bit different than what we've done before. We are going to use for this some content that I've created, and it's probably not perfect because of that, but we'll do our best. If we go actually to the group, you'll see that I have loaded a couple of new um, data sets here um, that include um, data on trade from the World Trade Organization, as well as export data as well. They're created as feature layers, and they're all pretty up-to-date information as well. To work with these maps, you just have to choose one of them and click on them. And so I'm actually going to click on the exports of goods and services as a percentage of GDP. And once I click on that feature class, it should bring it up as a map and allow me to begin working with that, those data. Um, right now, I'm just actually looking at the data itself. And there may be time lapses as all these various data load, probably because of the way I've constructed it. But you should be able to eventually open it up in the map viewer, as I'm doing right now. So the data comes on. And one of the things you'll notice is that nothing really sh may show up here immediately. Um, and that could be a function that it's still loading, but it also might be the way the data is being um, shown based on what attributes are, are appearing here or not. So it's sort of come up and there's nothing there but all blue. And that's in part because I need to go in and I need to edit the layer style in a fairly specific way that will become quite common to you. You click on that, and what you have to do is you have to choose the specific attribute. So all of these data here um, are series of data from a number of years worth of data. So if we click on the field right here, you'll see that it, it gives you the um, attributes for each country by country name, a code, some other information here as well, but then each of the years that there is some data for. The data is going to be much more complete when we get a little bit more contemporary. So just to make this easy, I'm going to go to 2020, and then I'm going to click Add Data. It's going to then give me the option of how I'm going to show those data. And the best way to show the data is generally by showing them via color, but you're going to see that there are a couple of options, and I'm going to encourage you to experiment a little bit with some of those options. Again, the data might be a little bit too slow to load up, and that, again, is probably something, some way that I've constructed the data, but I have found that eventually it shows up. So it took about a minute for those data to load up. I paused the video. Um, we can go in here now, and you can see that the attribute that's chosen is the 2020 data. And then we can go ahead and make the modifications to those data as we've done them before, by cho choosing different colors, um, by showing different expressions as well. But another thing that we can do, in addition to this, is we can choose other years. So these are the 2020 data that shows the percentage of the entire GDP that is um, export-based, and you'll see that a number of countries have very high percentage of an export-based GDP. We can compare that to another year. So I'm going to go back in time a little bit. We'll probably lose some data, but we'll go back to 1990 here and add those data. Once we add those data, um, it's going to ask how we want to show them, and it automatically defaults to choosing to showing the 1990 data in a different way as a circle. Um, but you can actually go back in and change these attributes and how they are symbolized, and I'll let you do that. But I did want to point out that you can scroll down here, and there's sort of a comparison that you can do. And so I'm just going to click on that comparison right here that allows us to compare the ratio of 2020 to 1990 to maybe see how over 30 years um, the role of export of goods and services have changed in each country, which might be an intriguing thing to do. And you can change um, uh, the data, um, you can change the categories, you can change the data in a number of different ways here. So I'm just going to stop with that, but I think the really important point to show you here is that what we are doing right now is we are using attributes to show our data. We can also um, change um, the data a little bit as well,
by sometimes using data to divide against one another or subtract from one another. And that's something you might want to do, perhaps not as because these are percentage data, but when you have, for example, whole number data, you might want to do that. So there's a lot in here that you can potentially experiment with. I'm going to leave it at this. Um, I've given you three data set, sets that you can use, but you can probably find other data sets out there. In fact, I know you can that have multiple attributes and maybe not just years worth of data. It could be, for example, in population, something that shows fertility, something that shows mortality, something that shows um, maternal mortality. So there are all sorts of other data sets out there that have multiple attributes for each country. And one last thing, if you click on a particular country like the United States, you can actually see all those data um, laid out here and you can get a sense for how um, the data have changed over time for any one country. And that might be an interesting indication to you about how you want to manipulate this map. So we're moving into slightly more advanced features in ArcGIS Online and using geospatial data in new ways. And what I'm going to want for your second map is a map in which you do use multiple attributes from the same data set. And you can use these, but you might be able to find some others as well. We'll talk more about it in class, as always.